Hello my soccer universe, let's wrap up this club season <laughs> further with going to Spain and Portugal. Actually La Liga wrapped up already uh, during the week. Uh, however, Portugal finished yesterday evening, so but I decided I'll make them number three. Next you get then France and the Netherlands and I'll leave uh, Serie A for last. And yeah, we are going straight into World Cup mode. Quick thought on why Portugal has a Monday game as the only big league and um, La Liga finishes early. Well, um, in Spain there was a first cup round which we're not gonna cover, although some big teams were playing in there like Atletico Madrid. But um, on the other side, Spain starts relative, uh, uh, relatively a little bit earlier than Portugal. You can definitely tell the Portugal is in the last group. So, although I th Spain starts a day earlier, but you know, it was just an interesting observation. But um, going Portugal, I mean, nothing really big has changed. The big three keep on winning. Benfica are unbeaten. That I think is to me the uh, biggest one. Roger Schmidt has not lost a game since he took over at Benfica. Benfica are currently a force to be reckoned with, which I think is really, really interesting. Over in Spain, uh, it is more interesting because, remember, just a month ago, we said, oh, Real Madrid are so superior to Barcelona. Barcelona goes into the winter break, um, or in the World Cup break, I, I rather say. You can't say Christmas break because they come back after, uh, just, just, just before the New Year as leader in the table. Because Real Madrid, uh, they have dropped points uh, before, but they actually lose to Rayo uh, away from home and Barcelona keep winning. The biggest story though in Spain, and now it's almost a week ago, so it's a little bit um, a moot point to talk about, is of course the retirement of Gerard Piquet, which clearly he saw that he has no space in the squad at the, at, at the moment decided, yeah, okay, then I'm gonna retire and that is that, and uh, you know, kind of take control of the narrative again. Uh, that yes, I did it because I wanted to retire, and not because I was uh, forced into retirement. Because, because you can see what he wants. Uh, his send off was, of course, rather emotional. I found the embrace between Xavi and him. It was short. I think it was heartfelt because you know they have been battling up, but you also could tell that their relationship is at, at this very moment is not the very, very, very best as well. Uh, that he then in the in his last game uh, that he didn't play at Osasuna get sent off for berating the referee. I think is a fitting end to his career as a player. Um, and now the question is, how long will it take that he will run for president of his beloved FC Barcelona? So those are just a few uh, ahead of the uh, review. I would say we'll look at the last two weeks in Portugal. Again, I did not really follow it. And I have to say that the weekend, the you know, first weekend of November, all the big three won by four goals. Porto for nil over pass. So Sporting probably the most remarkable one. There's a reason why they are in the number one. So for, uh, for nil over uh, Guimaraes. And Benfica away to uh, Sturil. I think the standard result is that Casa Pia have beaten Braga. Braga started so brightly this season and are now coming on a trajectory down for sure. And then on the past weekend, again, everyone uh, winning, uh, Porto winning the uh, Porto Derby against, at Boavista. Um, Benfica over Gilles Vicente and Sporting over Family Cow. So again, all relatively straightforward results. And we had in the Monday result uh, between uh, Santa Clara and Sturili with a 3-1 win. And Casa Pia, just after beating Praga, lose at home to Chavez, who is another promoted team that are actually doing quite well. Because if we look at, at the table, we have Casa Pia in fifth spot. I mean, Sporting now up to fourth uh, behind Praga. And as I said, Praga have been coming down a little bit. Um, over the past few weeks. Uh, but Chavez and Casa Pia are really doing well. And also Rio Af, the, the other third promoted team, is also in not quite in the top half, but leading the bottom half of the, of, of the table. Whereas teams that recently have been doing well, like um, Gilles Vicente have finished high, Passos have been up there. They are all now in relegation trouble, which I found really, really intriguing. Up top, as I said, Benfica flying have a pretty big cushion porto though maybe i mean it's still only 13 rounds played so we have uh, more than 60 percent of the season are still to be played overall 
and the expected standings, if, if you look at it, I mean, it seems kind of set in stone that, you know, a Braga could potentially pick the sporting, but uh, it's very unlikely. You can really see Benfica and Porto are the class. Sporting is just a little bit better than Braga, and then there's the rest of the league. But you also see Santa Clara, Family Cow, Gil Vicente are teams that should be much better uh, than they are, but they have such a bad start to the season. It's just for Maritimo and Passos, uh, especially, uh, it does not look good at the moment. The league comes back before the new year. I just, I just don't, I know only the fixtures. I don't know any, uh, you know, but I don't know when they will play. So I forego this. Let's go over to Spain. I actually am very in Real Mallorca who had a rather remarkable uh, week. I mean, on the, the you know, it's almost a week and a half ago now. Uh, the big one was, of course, the Seville Derby. But let's go um, bit by bit. Uh, the first game that I actually saw a little bit was Celta against Osasuna and while Avila, uh, Jimmy Avila gives uh, Osasuna two goals in between, of course, Iago Aspas and equalizer, I think uh, Celta probably would have deserved an equalizer in there as well and Celta are starting to not get the results. I think they are a much more better team than they, um, than they are currently stand. Uh, we already talked about the um, send-off for Gerard Pique in the game, home game against Almeria. I think the other point is that Lewandowski in the seventh minute missed a penalty um, where, you know, pulled it wide, where in all honesty, maybe he could have given it to Pique, but seemingly Pique gave it then back to Lewandowski. He kind of messed the party. Barcelona missing many, many chances. But, you know, when I saw the two goals, especially the one from Usman Dembele in the 48th minute, where they finally find the breakthrough, all of us think, yeah, if you let him play, he's going to score. It was not much more than uh, much more thought than that, and Frankie de Jong, of course, gets that one. But that game should have been way more than two nil. Um, Atleti continued; they are really, really bad form. They played for over an hour with a man up. Cabrera being sent off for uh, um, Espanyol, however, Darder gives them the lead in the 62nd. And then only Joao Felic, who actually has been quite good over the past few weeks, however, it does not work with Simeone, um, gets them. The equalizer, um, another 1-1 one, one between Real Sociedad and Valencia. Uh, both goals scored by Valencia players. And again, Elustondo being sent off in the 17th minute. So uh, you really thought that maybe... I mean, Real Sociedad is a really good team. But with a man uh, less, you would think that Valencia should have probably gotten that win overall. Uh, I always like it when I look at Valencia at, 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 at the moment, you know, there's a Samu Castillejo in there and Gattuso. They are becoming a little bit uh, Milanified in, <laughs> in a way. Uh, big shocker for uh, Villarreal with Mallorca winning there. Uh, goal by Murici and Daya. Uh, Coach Kike Setien having a really, really, really rough start because... Um, his playing style probably takes a little bit uh, to get um, gelling and I'm not sure he has the right players at Villarreal and the Villarreal fans are also already not liking him. So uh, it's not a good start for him like at all. The crazy game of course was uh, the Seville Derby, El Gran Derby. Um, we can talk about the goals, but I think all that we should... T on, and now we have to talk about the goals, because, I mean, the first goal through Navas, this was a freak on goal, where it's basically he was too fast and the ball got internet. Betis controlling the game, and it got even better when Montiel got uh, sent off in the 38th minute. But the big story in this was were the three red cards. So first, Sevilla goes a man down, and in each and every occasion, the referee just gave, gave a yellow, and sometimes you really wonder... Boy, you need to see this immediately and say this is a red card. Honestly, it, 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 it was almost amazing. Okay, bad foul. Yeah, we give a yellow card. Then, uh, oh, what is this? What is this? We run out and then he had this very uh, weird running stance. It was ridiculous. Uh, it was absolutely ridiculous. But yeah, with a man advantage and Betis already controlling the game, they took then the lead and it really seemed all right. And then Nabil Fekir is sent, sent, sent off for an elbow in the face of uh, Papu Gomez. And that is the one red card where, yes, by the letter of the law is okay. But if Papu Gomez is not Papu Gomez, this uh, elbow, that was not that malicious. It will not hit him in the face. It's because Papu Gomez is so freaking small. And that did not sit right for me. The Borja Iglesias red card then in the 49th minute, 
that I saw way more because it, he did not mean it, but it was really, really, really bad. And he knew it the moment the foul was given that this was only a yellow was a really, really uh, off one because uh, the Montiel and the Borja Iglesias both should be off. And then with both of the uh, offensive powerhouses gone, yeah, Betis were hanging on. And then uh, Nemanja Gudel uh, f- finally finds his shooting boots for uh, Sevilla. I mean, he I think he scored one at Mallorca, if I don't, don't remember. Now he gets another crazy good equalizer. He probably should have gotten an even better goal a little bit later on. So in the, in the end, Sevilla were actually disappointed. And disappointment also was what we had to say about Real Madrid. They're limping into this uh, international break. Uh, absolutely. And Ra- uh, Rayo Vallecano took an early lead, but then when Modric and Militao uh, in short succession turned the game, the game around and, and, you know, a Modric penalty, uh, all well played, you really thought, okay, they don't have to put all the effort in. They still get their, the result good on them. However, Garcia equalizes just before the half. And then Real Madrid kind of vanished and were overpowered. And Trejo with the penalty uh, got then the winner, a deserved winner. And a, a winner that put Barcelona on top. And for them it got them even better because they beat Osasuna away from home. Before that, uh, Athletic Club beating Real Valladolid also kind of ending the year, uh, the year on a high note. The Barcelona win at Osasuna, this was uh, probably the first time that I say, oh, this is a gutsy Barcelona team. Because 1-0 down in the sixth minute. And then uh, Lewandowski gets two rather stupid yellow cards. And the second one fully deserved in the 31st minute. Because you can see how he's lining the player up to shove him away. Clear yellow red. I don't know why he was complaining about that. This was as clear a yellow red as it can be. And now Barcelona is a man down and a goal down. They, of course, harassed the referee, uh, namely Gerard Piquet, who said, I have nothing to lose, I let him have it. And they come back, Pedri gets an equalizer, and uh, they keep on and actually are then even the better team and get a very late uh, winner through Rafinha. And I think this is a this could be a team-building performance for Barcelona. Yes, there's a break now. But you could see how Real Madrid are limping into the break versus Barcelona actually getting something going suddenly. This will be interesting to watch once we come back. I still would say, um, the numbers tell something, I still say that Real Madrid over is the better team. But Real Madrid now, they need to win a Clásico in Barcelona. And that, let's let's see it. Uh, another remarkable result is, of, of course, um, Real Sociedad winning at Sevilla again. Two red cards and both this time for Sevilla. I don't know what what, what, what was this in Andalusia. Serlo uh, scoring, uh, Bryce Mendes scoring, Rafa Mir pulls one back when uh, Sevilla were already two men down. Rakitic and Nyanzu. I know that some of the red cards were a little bit uh, weird, but uh, it's just... Then you again wonder why is Rasos that not really lining up Sevilla for a proper beatdown and putting Sousa Sampaoli in even more trouble than he's already in. Heap of trouble for Atletico Madrid losing again to Muriki Gold to Mallorca. Uh, Mallorca have beaten Atletico Madrid about that time at uh, Wanda. So yeah, uh, Atletico Madrid is definitely has some soul search, searching to do. And uh, <laughs> continuing the theme with red cards for civil teams. Uh, Gonzalez is sent off in 61st with a yellow red. And at that point then, in driving rain, Valencia get it um, off Almeida, Guillermon and uh, Justin Kluivert scoring three. And Real Madrid uh, had hard, hard work. I mean, yes, the pro should have led by more, the Eda Militao goal in the 40s, and then uh, Modric missing a wide open goal, where even then um, uh, Angelotti quipped afterwards. Well, you have to be happy that you already have nominated for the World Cup squad <laughs> after that miss. Uh, Tony Cross, great shot, makes it 2 0, but Cadiz pulls, pulls one back, and then they, well, it could have been it, they would have not been deserved. In Overall, Real Madrid deserved to win this game. But, you know. Uh, could have ended 2-2. Two, two. And so uh, entering the winter break, as I already said, we have Barcelona up top two points ahead of Real Madrid. And they are now the favorites. They are now the favorites to win the La Liga title. 
pretty remarkable stuff. I mean, ever since the Classico, it kind of the tables were turning, and but I don't think it's the last twist in there because they are really, really very close. It's only you know Barcelona having a win more uh, and um, Real Madrid having a draw more. What swings it to Barcelona is the Clasico in Barcelona. I think this is what's the um, the big deciding factor here. Atletico Madrid still um, slated to make it a Champions League spot, but uh, it's, it seems really, really tough. See. Behind that big two, I mean, it's really Sociedad, Bilbao, uh, Atleti, Real, Mad uh, Real Betis, Osasuna, Rayo, uh, down to Villarreal. I mean, all those are very well in contention for a Champions League or at least a European spot. And on the bottom, it's also relatively tight, tight with Sevilla going into this World Cup slash Christmas break in the relegation zone. And that is something that no one would have expected. Also, Celta being precariously down there. Uh, looking at the expected standings, it's actually Espanyol, Cadiz and Elche. Elche definitely sad on to, to go down there. It's an uh, open title race. And then Atletico Madrid still, based on their rating, probably strong enough. And Sevilla also, based on their rating, strong enough to probably finish mid-table. But European, we can't forget about Sevilla being in the European spot next season uh, round. The league comes back just ahead of the new year or around new year. But again, I only know the fixtures. I don't know the exact dates, so I'm not giving them to you. Any case, what do you think about this turnaround in uh, Spain? Uh, what do you think about Gerard Piquet? Of course, what do you think about Benfica? And uh, who will win the title? Especially in Spain, I'm most interested. Any other thing that you want to add, please drop a line below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.